Okay, Kevin, what's the, uh, what's the topic for today? What's the, do you have any questions for me? I was just wondering about standard heat of formation and if you could explain what it is because in the text there's a bunch of calculations and stuff, but maybe if we could do one practice problem and if you could explain it to me, that would be really helpful. Okay, all right, um, I could probably do that. Um, let's, let me, let, let me, let me uh, do a little writing, then we'll, then we'll, then we'll do some explanation, then we'll look at some things that, I, that, are, that might get, get us somewhere on that one. Okay, so um, one of the things that I know is that um, if I take a compound like um, methane or uh, propane or octane or whatever, uh, some hydrocarbon, and I react it with oxygen, um, the products are carbon dioxide and water. And um, that's all well and good, but there's another piece of a product that in each one of these cases, these ones release tons of energy. And by this part of the course, we've learned about balancing equations. And so if I, if I do some of that, okay, one carbon, one carbon, four, hy four hydrogens, two hydrogens, I better put a two over here. Um, that just leaves some oxygen. So I've got two, four oxygens. So I put two oxygens there. So in this methane equation, um, I've got carbon here and carbon there. I've got hydrogen here and hydrogen there. And I've got oxygens here and oxygens there. And so in this, using the law of conservation of mass, um, in all of these processes, the, um, the atoms in these compounds are all present before and after. But on the product side, there is a bunch of energy that's released. And so somehow in the um, reaction of methane and oxygen, somehow in the rearrangement of those atoms, a whole load of energy gets released. And so we know then there must be something about the way these molecules are bonded to each other such that over here in a carbon dioxide and in a water molecule, there is less energy than there is in the methane and the oxygen. So far, so good? So far, so good. Okay, so what that says is that these particular uh, molecules over here contain less energy than the reactant molecules. And so standard heats of formation and standard enthalpy of formation uh, and enthalpy of formation, energy, heat, are just ways of thinking about and accounting for how much energy is in the reactants, how much energy is in the products, and can we calculate the amount of energy that's gonna be produced in a reaction or used up in a reaction, or using the amount of energy that we can determine that comes from a reaction, maybe we can find out some things about the energy contained in the bonds. That's where we're headed, those, those kind of things, okay? Okay. Did you notice that I'm wearing a Band-Aid today? Yeah, you were wearing one yesterday too, right? <laughs> I was, yeah. I was gonna <laughs> ask why. <laughs> well, I cut myself doing a job. That's pertinent because um, when one uh, cuts oneself, sometimes you decide you need to clean it out. And one of the ways of cleaning it out 
is to put hydrogen peroxide on it. Have you ever done that on a cup or anything like that? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. So you can buy you can buy hydrogen peroxide. And hydrogen peroxide, if you put it on your skin, or really it's actually the red blood cells will help it uh, um, decompose into oxygen and water. And the way that works is that this oxygen that is produced is really highly pure oxygen, right? The concentration of as the hydrogen peroxide decomposes into oxygen and water there's a ton of oxygen right there and all the bacteria and and the organisms that are might be trying to grow in your cut they they basically die of too much oxygen being present so to speak and so so uh that's why you put hydrogen peroxide on your skin to cut it down um in fact actually i was thinking about that and so i wanted to show you uh another way that we see these reactions so this was I think the third or the fourth of the elephant's toothpaste videos that I found today. Right, so he's he's pouring uh, hydrogen peroxide, and he's going to use some. Uh, um, he's going to he's going to use a catalyst, and he's got some soap in there, and he does elephant's toothpaste. I bet you tons of our students have seen that because almost every high school science teacher will try and do it at some point. Um, anyway, so this is like the world's largest. Uh, elephant's toothpaste demonstration that they're building up to in this video. If somebody wants to go watch that, they can. But it's the exact same reaction of, so but it's the, it's the exact same reaction, hydrogen peroxide decomposing into oxygen and, uh, and water, okay? So um, another thing I wanna show you is I wanna show you some tables of enthalpies of formation. So this comes from Cengage. And it says the standard heat of formation values for some selected compounds. Okay. And it apparently, uh, oh, I mean, a couple of weeks ago, we had a, a video on how to read tables, on how to read chart. Okay. This is an excellent opportunity. Here it says it's in kilojoules per mole and it's at a particular temperature. That probably means that different temperatures matter um, and it's measured per mole. So it's the amount of energy per mole of the particular substance. So if I look down this table, um, I can see that calcium carbonate has a value of uh, 1200 kilojoules per mole. Uh, calcium oxide has a value of 635 kilojoules per mole. I think if I play my cards right, I can get the, uh, uh, I want to show you some other tables because there's some really interesting things. So here's one, here's another one. Um, oh, look at this. Here is silver chloride at minus 127 kilojoules per mole. Oh, look at this. Here's bromine, zero. That makes no sense. I mean, I can have reactions that take place that involve bromine plus bromine. Bromine, Br2, is bromine attached to another bromine. There must be some energy in that bond, right? I mean, it's two atoms bonded to each other. If I break it apart, it's gonna take some energy. If I put them together, it's gonna to release some energy. And so when it says bromine, if on this chart we see bromine at zero, that is the standard part of the enthalpies. In, in every molecule, there is a certain amount of energy, but we don't know what that absolute amount of energy is. And so the way that these tables and the way that we have done this, these calculations is by comparing them to uh, what are called standard states. And so you'll see that silver as a solid has a value of zero. And so we have defined that silver in its elemental form as a solid in the way that we we know it at 25 degrees celsius has a value of zero bromine in the way that we find it at 25 degrees celsius has a value of zero those are basically we start from the assumption that in the in in nature's way of having those molecules exist where we are right now that is zero and then we move from there uh, to whatever it, whatever it takes. So here is carbon 
in the form of graphite at zero, calcium at zero, chlorine as a gas at zero. So on this table, it's not saying that chlorine gas has no energy. It's saying that we're going to start our calculations from this basic level of where we are right now. Okay. Okay. So when it's zero, it's like a reference point. Like it's a reference, it's a reference exactly. point. Exactly. It's a it's a reference point. And so on this table, it shows the zeros. On the Cengage table, the one that we're going to be using a lot, it doesn't show any of those zeros. And so you have to know, I have to know, we have to remember that if it's hydrogen gas, if it's bromine gas in its natural state, it has a value. If it was on this table, it would be a zero. Silver metal would be zero. Oxygen gas would be zero. Um, so those are, that's one thing that's not entirely evident from this particular table that's included in the okay. 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 And so, um, okay. So here's oxygen gas at zero. Here is, oh, look, here's water at 285.5. Okay. That's where we'll, we'll, we'll need that one in a little while. Okay. Okay. All right. So I want to do hydrogen peroxide decomposing into oxygen and water okay yeah and so the question i might ask is how much energy is released when i when this reaction takes place you saw in the video uh he added the catalyst the reaction took place it produced a lot of oxygen that bubbled up and it produced uh, and it was doing you had, you had some soap in there as well to make it uh, make frothy bubbles and that sort of thing but it's a reaction that's pretty spontaneous um and um so what we're going to do is we're going to try to calculate the delta h of the reaction of hydrogen peroxide decomposing into oxygen and water Okay, if I make a mistake here, you make sure you correct me, all right? Um, all right. Okay, first thing is my equation is not balanced. So I've got two, two hydrogens, two hydrogens, so far so good. I've got uh, uh, two oxygens and I've got three oxygens on this side. And hopefully by now you're comfortable enough with balancing equation to recognize this oxygen being by itself is a real asset in, in balancing. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, Hey, let's save this oxygen for the end. If I, if I put a two here, now I've got four hydrogens. Two here, now I've got four hydrogens. Um, two makes four oxygens. Two makes four oxygen. Oh, my equation's balanced. So that, that was pretty useful. That was pretty easy. Now, the reason, and one of the reasons that I want to balance it is I might remember to myself, might remind myself to, to say that, um, if I read this equation formally, I mean, typically I often will say two hydrogen peroxide produce one oxygen and two water molecules. But if I wanted to be, go from the individual molecule up to the macroscopic scale, I would say, oh, I've got two moles of hydrogen peroxide producing one mole of oxygen and two moles of water okay okay and that might remind me that might remind me if that um if i go back to my table of values here that might remind me that in these tables uh, in these values they're given in kilojoules per mole And so the values that I have here, okay, so my value for um, water is negative 285.5 kilojoules per mole. And my value for oxygen, 
oh, this is oxygen, it's in its standard state, so my value for oxygen is zero. Zero kilojoules per mole. And I looked it up before, but my value for our hydrogen peroxide is minus 187.6 kilojoules per mole. How am I doing? So far, so good. Okay. So I want to know overall, as this reaction takes place, how much energy is released. And apparently, my products are producing uh, the standard heat of formation for my products are these two values. And my, in this case, I only have one reactant. But it's standard heat of formation as that. Okay? And so if I want to know the overall heat of reaction, uh, mathematically, the way that we typically do it is we say, let's take the products and subtract from it the reactants. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, hey, my products are water, and I've got two moles of water, each doing 285.5 kilojoules per mole. So I've got two moles H2O times negative 285.5 kilojoules per mole. That looks promising because my moles and my moles will cancel out. And my other product I'm going to add to that is I've got one mole of oxygen times zero kilojoules per mole. Fortunately, my units are going to cancel out. And fortunately, I'm multiplying by zero here. So that <laughs> zero times one. So this, this term here ends up being a zero. So I'm gonna add those two together and I'm gonna subtract from them the reactants. And my reactant apparently is two moles of hydrogen peroxide um, multiplied by negative 187.6 kilojoules per mole. And my moles will cancel out, and and so I've got two times uh, a negative one eighty seven point six, and I've got two times a negative two eighty five point five. Okay, this is your chance to step up here, Kevin. Yep, yep, yep. So two times two eighty five point five is five hundred seventy one. Point zero kilojoules. Okay. And um, what's what's the sign on that, Kevin? Is that a positive? It, it, it will be negative. Okay. So that's a negative. All right. And then two times one eighty seven point six negative one hundred eighty seven point six is negative three hundred seventy five point two kilojoules. 375.2 kilojoules? Yes. So moles and moles canceled. Um, moles and moles canceled. And I then one times two, zero is zero. And one times zero is zero, good point. Um, and, but it's also zero kilojoules, so I can add it to my, <laughs> my kilojoules. And that negative sign here is the same as that negative sign. It's the same as that negative sign. I should probably draw brackets around here so that this negative, so negative 187.5 times two is negative 375.2 kilojoules, right? Mm -hmm. And I've got, here I had negative 285.5 times two, so that's negative 571.0 kilojoules, right? Yep. So that's the same as saying negative 571 plus, 375. What number? What does that give me? That gets you 
negative 195.8 kilojoules. Kilojoules. Okay, so here I have a negative kilojoules for my reaction. So that means that as this reaction proceeds, going um, hydrogen peroxide to oxygen and water, overall, I'm going to produce 195.8 kilojoules. And oh, it's a negative sign. That means the energy is coming out. So that means that this reaction is going to be exothermic. It is going to release energy. That means that the products contain less energy than the reactant did. And that is number of kilojoules. But you know what? I was pointing up here. Maybe I should really have been pointing here because it's two moles of hydrogen peroxide producing one mole and two moles is 195.8 kilojoules, right? So the reaction, if it's two moles of it, it produces 195. If it were one mole of hydrogen peroxide, it would be approximately 98 kilojoules per mole, right? Yep, 97.9. Yeah, right, so the, the value here, this value, is for this reaction. And the way we wrote this reaction was for two moles of hydrogen peroxide. If we had only half as much hydrogen peroxide, i.e. one mole, we would produce only half as much energy. But that is our way of using standard enthalpies of formation to, oh, I think my camera just went off. Yeah. Fix that. Oh, low battery. Yeah. Busy telling me I had a low battery. Oh, we recovered pretty well. Okay. Um, so that's our way of using standard enthalpies of formation to calculate how much energy can come out of a re reaction. And in this case, the reaction was for two moles of, of uh, hydrogen peroxide, but we might be asked for one mole or for 30 grams or for some other amount. And so we'd have to convert this, but this is telling us for this particular reaction. Okay, so standard heat of enthalpy, you just have to understand, it shows how much energy is in products and reactants, and then it will show you if, the reaction makes energy or absorbs energy, I guess, then? Yeah, yeah, exactly. So in this case, the value is negative, and so the energy is coming out. Um, it tells us that the product, if energy comes out, it tells us the products contained less energy than the, than the reactant did. Okay, awesome. Okay, was that helpful, Kevin? Yeah, I think I had a, another tiny question too. Um, when you were showing some um, some of the values for the standard heats of for the the enthalpy values. Yes. Yeah. So I was just wondering how you knew because if you look on the table, there are actually two values for water, right? Right, right, right. Yeah, I think I used a little piece of chemical knowledge there, didn't I? Um, I know that when elephant's toothpaste reaction occurs, that when the hydrogen peroxide decomposes, the gas that's produced is oxygen, and the water that's produced is as a liquid. Um, why did I know that? I think I knew that because I've seen, probably because I've seen this question before, which is not helpful, um, probably because I know that the temperature at which that reaction was taking place is 
of room temperature. It is a below boiling point of water temperature. And so I think that's why, I, that's one of the pieces of chemical knowledge that I use to know that it was water as a liquid that was produced, not water as a gas that's produced. Um, so you just have to be wary of which state of matter and which yes. value you use. Yes, yes, yeah, yeah. So thanks for pointing that out, Kevin. Yeah, I think that I'm, uh, yeah, I think that I jumped, th jumped ahead with that piece of chemical knowledge that I had. Um, no problem. That, that's yeah. okay. Yeah. 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 Excellent question. Thank you. Otherwise, I don't have any other questions. Do you have anything else you'd like to add? No. I mean, uh, there are dozens of practice problems like this in Cengage. There are probably hundreds of thousands of videos on the internet that people can watch to try to learn to solve these problems. And, uh, um, yeah, so, but, but conceptually, they're all doing the same thing. They're trying to determine the amount of energy that the reactants have relative to the amount of the energy that the products have, and uh, then using that information for valuable ideas. All right. I think that okay. answers my question then. Okay. All right. Thanks, Kevin, very much. All right. Talk to you next time. Yep. Talk to you next time, Dr. Hunter.